Hey everyone, me Kevin here. I think this it goes as a warning for everybody who has a job and who's trying to build their wealth in the longer term. We have an r slash real estate post here that's gotten some popularity, came up and suggested, and I thought, hey, let's respond to this since after all, I'm a real estate broker, used to be a licensed lender, and what I do has everything to do with helping people build their wealth. So let's take a listen here. I want to thank everyone for reading through this mess beforehand. Me and my partner bought a house about a month ago in Texas have to admit we were desperate to buy the house, didn't consider our situation, we put 30% down, mostly to reduce the payment as much as possible with a 4.625% interest rate. Luckily enough, we didn't overbid for the house, we just bid according to similar houses in the area. This would be known as bidding according to what the comps are, which is obviously very, very important. And now, the ugly part. Uh, and they paid about $230,000 for the house, by the way, with a loan of one fifty. dollars Now, the ugly part. My partner, uh, has uh, their job, their job has been slowing for a while now, and uh, now there are hints of layoffs in the near future for this person's partner, and uh, they themselves work in tech, making decent money to pay for the house, until now that the industry is facing a tremendous slowdown. Maybe venture capital tech here, also seeing a huge, huge slowdown. Uh, anyway, a lot of people have started to get laid off, and I'm not precisely, precisely the most important individual here. Worst case scenario, we can both be unemployed in the near future. This is the solution that I'm thinking. Sell the house now for a huge loss, and then pay even more in the tax season. Well, first of all, if you had a big loss, you wouldn't pay more in the tax season. Uh, but you'd definitely be limited in how much you could write off. But anyway, we would move into our old place, which is a mobile house, which is more affordable. I've been looking for houses around the area that are still selling relatively fast. So they're kind of getting excited thinking, oh, well, if the homes are still selling, let's, let's just dump now quickly. As I say, I'm aware it will be a huge loss, not a flipping situation here, since the house is in good shape. Okay, well, that's also a very important detail right there. We'll come back to that. And I'm aware that the mortgage will not be happy. How probably is it I will face a hard time getting a new loan in the future? We're both really depressed right now. There are a bunch of boxes that we need to stop uh, unpacking, and they're just sitting there. We fought for a long time to get the house, and now we're facing this challenge. I would appreciate any advice, specifically from somebody who's been in the situation or professional in the field. Well, we got the professional in the field situation, but I've also been in a similar situation given that my first property uh, that, uh, that I bought with my wife, we were barely able to afford the payment and we thought, oh my gosh, if one of ours just hours gets cut, we wouldn't be able to afford the property. And so we actually came up with some logical solutions for this. So we'll talk about uh, those exactly. Let's just get, get into some of those ideas. But I like to put numbers on the odds of both of you getting laid off. Let's start there. Let's say both of you have a 30% chance of being laid off. Well, the beautiful thing that you could do is you can multiply that together, and then you come up with a combined likelihood of only 9% that both of you are going to get laid off. So if you evaluate and play with numbers here, you can probably see that for both of you to get laid off, probably going to be pretty unlikely, but it could happen. So what I like to do is just go to the worst case scenario and see what can we do to deal with it. So let's think about this. First of all, let's make this clear. The lender does not care if you pay off your loan after a few months. Ideally, six months, that's usually the window in which they want to keep it because they want to be able to sell the loan to another party. But generally, the lender makes money doing what is known as making the loan to get points or to get some kind of spread in which that they make your loan at, let's say, 4.625 where you are, and they sell it on the open market, uh, and they pick up points on the open market because maybe the open market has uh, interest rates that are actually at 4.4 at that time, and that little difference there is something that they can essentially get paid points for. So either you pay points or the market pays points. The lender, once they make the loan, doesn't care. This loan goes off into the MBS market, which is the mortgage uh, bond market, and people don't care, mortgage-backed securities, MBS, uh, it, it, the lenders really don't care if anything, they want you to do another loan in the future. <laughs> so it's fine, they just want your business back. You, you don't have to worry about that. So don't, don't let things that don't matter blur your decision-making process here whatsoever. Like don't even think about taxes. Don't even think about the lender right now. Focus on what you have, which first of all is a low odd of actually losing your job. So let's write that down, or both of you losing your job. So low odds of both, uh, both getting fired, right? So let's put a little check mark there. Uh, there we go. But let's say 
uh, right now, you're in a situation where you fear that this could happen. Do you ever think about how much information you have to give up when you sign up for a crypto exchange? Name, birthday, email, phone number, social, driver license, ETC. And I mean, pretty soon they'll be asking you for your kidneys and there's a lot of sensitive information and some of these companies have been going BK and you know what? I could potentially leave them vulnerable, even companies that don't go BK to cyber criminals who are certainly aware of all this information, which is why we are seeing a growing number of cyber attacks on these types of exchanges. Well, thankfully today's sponsor Aura is here to help. Aura is an identity theft, a fraud monitoring, VPN, password management, antivirus software combined into one easy to use app. Aura monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, social security numbers, and sends alerts fast right to your phone and email. When I entered my email into Aura, they monitored the dark web and found that my email and password had been exposed three times. Dang it. I see Instagram accounts also pretending to be me and trying to scam followers all of the time. And I hate to say it, but there are just malicious people out there. And I have seen just firsthand how malicious these attackers can be. So protect yourself and protect your family from identity theft at Aura.com slash meet Kevin. And let me know down in the comments how many times Aura found your personal information on the dark web. If you sign up now at Aura.com slash meet Kevin, you'll get two weeks totally for free with Aura. What's the first thing you should be doing? Well, the first thing that you should really be doing before you start thinking about when you both lose your jobs is milk the fact that you both still have your jobs and do what I've been preaching on this channel really forever, but especially since November when we had a euphoric bull market. And then as that euphoric bull market ran away, I really amplified the messaging, which is pay off your debts, pay off any margin that you have, credit cards, car loans, and start building a reserve. Make sure you reduce your expenses, start saving more. That sounds stupid, but how much are you spending every single week going out to restaurants? Maybe limit that, or you know what? Mix some tequila if you're gonna go drinking in, in a, you know, a bottle of Coke or something, or Jack and Coke, and go to a restaurant with that. Stop overspending for alcohol at restaurants. And stop going in the first place, <laughs> you know, if you can. You know, take, take your drink and go hang out at the beach, but make sure to check local laws first. But anyway, look, you haven't lost your jobs yet. So you're in a place where you could still set yourself up for comfort now by making sure you minimize other payments that you have. You know, look at things like, can you cut your TV bill, your internet uh, speeds? Do you really need the fastest in the world? Maybe if you do, keep it fine, but does it really make a difference? Uh, how many cell phone uh, services do you have or, or other subscriptions do you have that you can cut, right? Start going through those, start there. I wouldn't be so worried right now about thinking just about that mortgage payment. Then we'll talk about that mortgage payment because when my wife and I bought our first home, we also considered worst case scenarios. But with logic and some planning, we ended up finding some very useful ideas. So our payment was about $2,000 per month and we were making about $2,000 per month at the time. And so what we realized is, okay, well, if one of us had our hours get cut substantially, what we could do is we could A, rent out rooms, right? We had a three bedroom, two bath. And so we could rent two rooms, probably for at least at the time, 600, 700 bucks a piece. And that would make up more than half to almost 60, 70% of the mortgage. Uh, the rest is probably just the almost the principal portion of the loan, which is kind of just going into our forced savings account. Why would we give up that forced savings account when we could just rent out rooms? The forced savings of owning real estate are, are one of the most wonderful things of owning real estate. Now, next that we could do is we could jump in and we could rent out the entire property and, uh, and probably rent it out for about $2,000. Yeah, there'd be some incidentals, right? We'd probably still be negative because maybe we'd have repairs that would come up, 100, 200 bucks. But we could afford a slight negative if we had to move out and just rent out the whole thing for say what our mortgage is. The extra 200 or whatever, we could pay, we could cover that. And we'd live with either friends, uh, hopefully for, for a, a very large discount or just move back in with family uh, just until we got back up on our feet and we could, re, you know, we could return the favor to them in the future or whatever, right? That's what friends and family are there for. Uh, and so hopefully you have something you can lean on, which according to your post you do because you have a mobile home that you can move back into. So you don't even have to worry so much about that. Uh, and then the next thing that you could do is even if one of you loses a job, the first thing that you really should be considering is not, oh no, I'm a lame duck now and I'm going to sit here and do nothing, is you should get another job. 
uh, or, or even get a better job if you can. Yeah, but even if you realistically had to get a worse job, like you're all of a sudden mowing lawns or whatever, which is not an insult to people in the landscaping business, I'm just saying like if you're going from tech or, or jobs that are paying you very, very well, then you feel like you're doing something that's beneath you, don't. Like there is a demand for people to work hard and get paid for good work out there. So uh, this is actually the time what I, where I like to encourage people to double down on their skill sets, start getting uh, licenses, uh, get a real estate license, you know, get a mortgage license, uh, increase the, if you're in tech, what can you do to learn another language that you might need for a job at, you know, a different company that is hiring right now. Uh, you know, you can look at companies that are hiring as well, like, for example, American Express says they're still hiring. And so you wonder, great, are they maybe hiring some tech? Do they have offices out here in Texas, right? These are all things that you could look for, uh, you know, insight into, and so that way you could start preparing. So I'm a big fan of get ready, be proactive now. And I wouldn't make a rash decision and just go dump your property uh, because even if you sold it for $10,000 less than what you paid for it after your selling costs and moving costs and everything, you're still gonna be down like 30 grand on this. Uh, it's a terrible idea. You worked hard to save up that down payment of 30%, 80 grand. Don't, uh, uh, don't, don't blow it up. So uh, stay strong, make the right decisions, Thank you everybody else for watching this. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing. Leave a message down below in terms of what else they might be able to do. Uh, and if you haven't yet, check out the programs on Building Your Wealth. We've got an expiring coupon code on July 28th. Thanks. Bye.